I have here the all-new Placium Engineering Super Simple Mini H Quad Pro. This is a 250 millimeter 80 gram mini multicopter frame cast from a high strength polyurethane resin. This particular model is a high visibility fluorescent orange color. However, in addition to this color, I offer six other standard color options. The least expensive color option is my standard black frame. I also offer a clear frame, which is an excellent choice for use with colored LEDs. I have a white color option. and a semi-transparent blue color, which will also work well with LEDs. I offer three different semi-transparent, high-visibility fluorescent colors, such as this fluorescent green. As well as a fluorescent yellow. and finally a fluorescent orange. Before I go into detail about the components I've selected for my build, I'd like to talk about some of the features of these super simple mini multicopter frames. These frames are a single piece construction that measure 250 millimeters from motor to motor. The weight of the frame is approximately 80 grams and the thickness of the frame is seven and a half millimeters with a tolerance of a half millimeter. You'll notice that these frames have standard 45 millimeter and 30 millimeter mounting options for many of the most common flight controllers. Beneath the frame are hex nut traps, which can be used with nylon standoffs in order to secure the flight controller. These hex nut traps keep the frame nice and low profile, in addition to preventing the standoffs from slipping during flight. The center of the frame is open to allow routing of wires from the front to the rear of the frame. There are also two sets of slots for use with Velcro battery straps. Each arm has two additional slots that can be used to mount the electronic speed controllers using a plastic zip tie. There are two holes, one at the base and one at the end of each arm, which can be used to route the wires from the motor beneath the arms to the electronic speed controllers. At the center of each arm is an M3 hole. When used with nylon standoffs, this hole can be used to secure landing gear to the base of the frame. Each arm has two sets of standard motor mounting options, the first of which is this M2 slot. These slots measure 16 millimeters at the outside and 12 millimeters at the inside. Although the M2 slot will work for most of the common mini multi-rotor motors on the market. Some motors such as the Sunny Sky X2204 require an M3 by 16 millimeter style mount. This is also a feature of these frames. Beneath each arm is a six millimeter wide channel, which can be used to route wires from the motors to the speed controllers, to secure LEDs, or to mount landing gear. Both in the front and the rear of the frame, there is an additional set of slots which can be used to mount FPV equipment to the front and the back of the frame. Here I have my complete build, and I'd like to talk a little bit about the parts that I've selected for it. For my flight controller, I've chosen to use the Naze 32 which is mounted to the frame using a set of four 5.6mm M3 nylon standoffs. 
These standoffs are approximately 8 millimeters tall. Beneath the flight controller, I have mounted my 2.4 gigahertz FreeSky X8R receiver, which is commonly available with the new Tyrannus radio. I've chosen to remove my receiver from the plastic protective housing so that I can secure it beneath the flight controller. However, if you choose to mount your receiver using this method, I highly encourage to place a piece of double-sided foam tape or electrical tape between the two boards in order to prevent any shorts from occurring. For my electronic speed controllers, I'm using the F12 amp Fire ESC from White Spike Quad. These are a 2 to 3 cell ESC with Simon K firmware. These motors are T motors. They're the MN1806 2300 kV mini multi rotor motor. And for props, I've chosen to use the APC 5545E prop. Beneath the frame, the motors are mounted using two 10 millimeter long M2 bolts. For some low profile motors, the bolts will need to be shortened. However, I recommend purchasing 10 millimeter bolts and using small M2 washers or lock nuts beneath the frame in order to shorten the distance between the top surface and the inside of the motor. Since this is my dedicated FPV platform, I've chosen to use a 5.8 GHz 600 mW Immersion RC video transmitter. This video transmitter is quite small and it easily fits along the side of the frame, secured using two plastic zip ties. At the rear, I have a circular wireless 5.8 GHz skew planar circular polarized antenna. For my camera, I've chosen to use the Sony 600 TV line SuperHad 2 CCD. This camera has no IR filter and it's in the standard 30 millimeter board camera format. This frame is designed to use with 30 millimeter board cams. The camera can be fit between the two outer arms of the frame and secured using a plastic zip tie around the neck of the lens. For my battery, I've chosen to use the Turnigy Nanotech 1800 mAh 3 cell lithium polymer battery. This battery has a 65 to 130 C discharge rating, which is quite high for a mini multicopter, but I found that despite the increased weight, it performs very well with these components. Using this 1800 milliamp hour battery and 5545 props, I get about 10 minutes of flight time. Beneath each of the arms, I've chosen to mount 12 volt LED strips. These are white LEDs that can be separated into segments of three LEDs. To secure the LEDs to the bottom of the arm, I've used thick CA glue with accelerator. To join any parts to the plastic frames, whether it be LEDs or to make repairs, I highly recommend using thick CA glue with accelerator as medium or thin CA glue does not always adhere to the smooth surface. Instead of powering these LEDs directly from the battery, I've chosen to power them from the outputs of the electronic speed controller. This way the intensity of the LEDs will vary with the throttle of each motor. In order to do so, the power for each of the LEDs has to be connected to any of the two outputs from the electronic speed controller. The polarity of the wires does not matter in this case. In order to demonstrate the LEDs, I'm going to go ahead and first take off the props. I'll go ahead and plug in the battery.
Once the system is ready, I'll arm the aircraft. And as you'll notice, as long as the rotors are not spinning, the LEDs will remain off. As I increase the throttle, the intensity of the LEDs will increase proportionally. This can also be useful for maintaining orientation, which I'll demonstrate by pitching and rolling the aircraft. And with that, I'd like to conclude this video overview of the all-new Placium Engineering Super Simple Mini H Quad Pro. I'll include links with more information about this frame and where to purchase it in the description of the video. If you have any questions, there's a contact form on my website, but I highly encourage you to visit my RC Group's product thread, which I will also include a link for in the description of this video. There you can post photos of your builds and ask questions of people who have purchased my frames and completed builds of their own. I'd like to thank you for watching, and please don't forget to subscribe.